Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. I'm Ashley with Halstead, and this session is called What's Working on Pinterest Now with Andrea Lee. Uh, Andrea owns Andrea Lee Designs, a one-of-a-kind gemstone jewelry company. She's a self-described Pinterest marketing geek, and she coaches jewelry designers and makers on Pinterest marketing through the Momentum program with Flourish and Thrive. Uh, she's also worked with internal product teams at Pinterest, so she knows what she's doing. Um, I'll be moderating this session, and I'll be in the chat. So if you have any questions for Andrea, put them in the chat, and I will keep track of them and ask them at the end during our Q&A time. If you have any technical difficulties, try reloading the session, leaving and coming back in. Um, but if nothing else, remember these sessions are being recorded, and all recording links will be sent out next week. So I'm going to turn it over to Andrea so we can get started and get this Pinterest party going, as she said. Let me let me <laughs> yes, let's do it. Uh, before we get going, though, I'm really interested to see um, where you guys are in your Pinterest marketing journey. So I'm going to actually um, hit this poll. Um, so basically, the question is, how would you describe where you are right now in your Pinterest marketing journey? Just getting started. OK, got it. All right, most of you are in the just getting started and in the uh, second category as well. That's actually not surprising at all. So awesome. So you guys um, should get a lot of value then out of today's presentation because basically I'm gonna be covering um, a lot of changes that have recently happened on Pinterest. So you people that are in the second category that have been using it are probably aware of some of these changes um, as a lot of these have come down in the last two years. And then this is just going to be good information for you guys that are just getting started because this is basically what I like to call Pinterest 2.0. It's a very different version of Pinterest than um, what has traditionally been so in the past. So um, <clears throat> two of the biggest areas affected by all the changes is the focus on creators um and new shopping features so let's get into this i've got a lot of information that i'm going to be covering here so you know don't feel pressured to take a bunch of notes right now if you want to just soak in this presentation again there will be a replay so you'll be able to kind of go back to this um and then any kind of slides that i think that you should be taking a screenshot i'll just kind of pause and be like here just take a quick quick screenshot of this That'll help you kind of um, keep some of your thoughts organized too of some of the things that you that stood out to you in, during this presentation. So let's get into this. Um, we are going to be covering is Pinterest a social platform because there is a difference between Pinterest and say Instagram or Facebook or any of those traditional social networks that you're used to engaging with. Um, what's in it for you product sellers? You know, I mean, this is definitely a product focus presentation. Um, and then the new shopping features, we're going to cover some of that. We're going to, um, I'm going to show you how to increase your brand's visibility on the platform. What best practices of pinning are really working the best right now on the platform, adapting to the new creator focus Pinterest, and what are your next steps? So Ashley sort of covered um, a lot of this information here, but I just want to let you guys know that first and foremost, I am a jewelry designer, just like you guys trying to market my business. I kind of fell into Pinterest marketing um, early and became one of the very first beta testers of what was then called story pins. They are now idea pins and they are a huge feature on the platform that is not going to be going away anytime soon. Um, but as Ashley discussed, I worked with several internal development teams to help steer new features and products on their platform. I have coached dozens of students through the Momentum program um, through Flourish and Thrive Academy. I've also been invited to Pinterest headquarters twice to participate in their creators conference and present at their annual employee conference, NickCon. And this year, in fact, I have my kickoff call um, with the Pinterest business community we are launching an ambassador program. Um, so we're excited to get that started this year as well. So let's get into this. So what sets Pinterest apart? Is it a social platform? This is a question I get a lot. It's a very valid question because on the surface, it seems like, oh, just another social platform, right? But it's not. It's actually 
a search engine. It's an image-based search engine. And, you know, primarily, this is a platform that people come to to plan the life that they love. So the purpose of this platform, the purpose of Pinterest is to connect users to their interests. So I'm sure a lot of you have probably used Pinterest to either plan a big life event or, you know, you you probably you probably went there, like say you wanted to redo your kitchen. You probably went to Pinterest to gather ideas and inspiration, right? Um, a lot of people have used it to plan their wedding. You use it to plan the life that you love. And so you are going to Pinterest to search for specific things. And Pinterest is indexing the content on their platform to make sure that you get what you want. It, it works and behaves very similar to Google. All right. And the main difference to understand how this works is knowing sort of how interest uh, or how Pinterest um, the, the taxonomy or basically what taxonomy means is like a system of classification. So how they classify the content that lives on their platform in order to distribute it um, when users come to the platform. So like I said, Pinterest wants to connect users to their interests. So they have an interest taxonomy. Um, and that's basically they how they do that is they use keywords in order for that content to be classified under a certain category. So when someone comes to the platform searching for that specific thing, it can serve that up in that search query versus an engagement taxonomy. This is very similar to something how Instagram um, sort of classifies and organizes its content on its platform. And this is action based, right? This is engagement based. This is for, you know, how many times did you um, like or comment on a post? Um, you know, how many, you know, how, uh, what accounts you engage with the most? Instagram's going to show you the co that type of content, right? Um, and same with Pinterest. In fact, the interest taxonomy can be broken down um, in a way where um, if you're, if you open up your home feed, you're going to see a lot of content in there that of, of, content that you've clicked on before, right? Pinterest's algorithm learns what you are interested in so it can better serve you content in your home feed of content that it thinks that you are going to be interested in. Now that was replaced by the chronological feed of way back in the day. I don't know if you guys were using Pinterest um, way back when it started, but it used to be chronological. So any accounts that you followed, anytime that account published a new pin, you would see it in your account chronologically, sort of like how Instagram used to work also before they kind of moved to the engagement taxonomy where they actually stopped um, doing the chronological feed and instead started serving you content um, that it thinks that you would be interested in. So very similar in the sense that it, both platforms are wanting to serve you content that you're going to engage with, but one, but in two different, very different ways. So again, interest versus engagement taxonomy. And so why this matters, you know, with keyword, with, with your keywords um, based taxonomy, like uh, Pinterest does to index all of their content, you don't actually need a ton of followers on your, on your profile in order for your content to get traction because Pinterest is going to be serving your content to people who are showing an interest in that in that particular topic of, of, of what you're publishing on your platform. But obviously, we're jewelry designers, right? So if someone is searching for a sterling silver ring and you are using your keywords appropriately to index your content, that's going to get served to someone who's just searching for it who's not following you. So you can actually get a lot of traction on an account with a small followership. Um, it's also designed to drive traffic. Right, just like Google. Once you find what you're looking for on Google, it's like here are the sites that you need to go visit, um, and also your content becomes evergreen on Pinterest. So this is basically the time that your content is discoverable. Okay, so half life of a pin. So basically, in digital market marketing, 
Half-life is defined as the time it takes for a piece of content to receive half of the total number of clicks or engagements that it will ever receive. As you can see, the half-life is much, much longer than anything else out there. I mean, if you see that, like, I'm going to compare it to Instagram because that's like the big, that's the big platform that everyone's on right now. 72 minutes is the half-life of your post. Um, you know, with a tweet, it's even less than that, 24 minutes on Twitter, and then 90, pin, 90 minutes for a post on Facebook. So as you can see, there's a huge difference here, um, giving your content a lot more legs and a lot more legacy on Pinterest than um, a social platform. So, you know, this is, a, this is why Pinterest is such a powerful tool, um, because of that interest taxonomy. But also, you know, you know, 97% of searches on Pinterest are unbranded, which is great for small businesses um, who have great products that people just, they want to be connected to great products, right? They're not really necessarily involved with finding a brand. Just like if you went to Google looking to replace an area rug, you probably don't have like a rug manufacturer in mind. But you definitely have an aesthetic of what you're going after, like size, color, color scheme, color palette. You have those things in mind. And those are the things that you want to find in your search to find a new area rug. You're not you know, worried about the manufacture of the area rug. You just want to find an area rug that fits inside your vision of what you're looking for. So, you know, the number of users on Pinterest has gone up 44% year over year. 83% uh, of weekly users um, on Pinterest have purchased based off of the content that they've seen on Pinterest. And 70% of users using Pinterest are using it to try to find jewelry and accessories. And that is a stat that us jewelry designers just adore. Um, and Pinterest is really prioritizing easier shopping for users. And again, that's going to be tied into some of the new shopping features that they are rolled out that we're going to be covering in some slides um, here very soon. Um, also, 44 million active users are coming to Pinterest on a monthly basis. Um, and if your dream client isn't in that 44 million, I just don't know where they could be. They're definitely in there. So, you know, if you're indexing your content, let's get your content in front and capture some of that awesome traffic that Pinterest is getting. Basically, you know, any social platform is you're just borrowing traffic that that platform is already getting. So if a platform is getting a, tons of traffic, you're basically setting up a little shop on there to try to capture some of that traffic, redirect it back to your site. Um, and then 77% of users have discovered a new brand while browsing on Pinterest. I have a cat here or something on my list. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and also, this is a big one. Uh, Pinterest has more than doubled traffic referrals to retailers since last year. That is awesome, right? We all want more traffic to our e-com stores. So this next section, we're going to be discussing the new shopping features on Pinterest. Um, we're going to talk about the Verified Merchant Program, which is very recently rolled out. Um, the Shop tab, which is going to be a new feature, basically on your business profile if you're a product seller. If you um, are a product seller, you've probably seen this change on your account. Um, or if you haven't even logged into Pinterest in a while, you'll see this, you know, be like, hey, where did my boards go? Because they changed all of that um, and how it appears on your profile. So we're gonna talk about the shop tab. We're gonna talk about product pins, even though product pins have been around on the platform, how they are created and how they appear are a little different now. Um, product tag pins, we're going to discuss that. And we're going to also talk about shoppable pins and also shoppable search functions as well. So let's get into new shopping features here. Okay, let's see here. This is, all right. Not sure what happened just there, but that's okay. Um, so one of the things that they've changed is basically how users use uh, the Pinterest app. Um, and so this is a mobile only feature. This is actually not something that's present if you actually opened your desktop and use Pinterest from your desktop. This is um, from your mobile. 
And they have a Today tab, right? And they, inside the Today tab, they have a lot of new services that they've added in the last couple of years. And one of them is the Shopping Spotlight. This is basically a section that is curated by industry's top magazine editors and influencers. Um, they talk about the latest trends. They actually um, feature products from merchants on the platform um, that have products that are similar to the trends that they are featuring. So this is basically just another surface now that your product pins can start to surface on. So, and also people on Pinterest are always shopping. On average, shoppers on Pinterest spend 80% more than people on other platforms, and they have a 40% bigger basket size. And this really ties back into the fact that, again, people are coming to Pinterest to plan, right? So they're planning their projects, and they're also kind of gathering ideas of products that they want to be part of their project. So as they are planning, they're also thinking about what they need to be buying. So because there's that kind of connection between the planning process and then the products that they're discovering on Pinterest, there's just bigger baskets um, because there's just more buyer intent there, if that makes sense. So the Verified Merchant Program, now this was rolled out um, last year widely, I believe, um, in, let's see here, I think it was summer of last year, um, and it's come a long way. It was really glitchy um, in the beginning. I know this because I've been, you know, part of the Merchant Program since they very first rolled it out. So they've come a long way um, since, since then, and they've really streamlined it. And they made it so easy, actually, for Shopify owners. Um, anyone who has a Shopify store, which is probably the majority of you guys here, um, there is a third-party app that you can easily just go ahead and plug into the back end of your Shopify site. And it's going to um, do all the functionality um, that is required in order to become a verified merchant. So it's basically going to upload your product catalog for you. It's going to install um, the Pinterest tag, basically, which is the tracking pixel that goes onto your site um, that basically tracks user behavior once they get to your site, once they come over to your site from Pinterest. Um, and this is just good information to have also. This is um, you also need that tag installed if you guys are wanting to create a promoted pin campaign, if you guys are looking to advertise as well. Um, but it does all that for you without you having to do anything. So people who are technophobes, um, this is a great, great feature for you guys. Um, if you do not have a Shopify store, um, there are, there's just a lot more clear documentation on how to make this work for you. If you guys are on Squarespace, I have a very, very in-depth blog post uh, that walks you through step by step how to get all the functionality that that Shopify app does for Shopify users. So um, there's a blog post on my site um, that you can go check out if you're a Squarespace user to get that taken care of. But so now what is the verified merchant benefits? Why does it matter? Uh, why should you care? Uh, basically, once you are approved, you will get this blue check mark um, next to your account. Um, alerting anyone that you are verified. Um, and that basically tells users who are using the platform or coming to your profile, looking at your products that you um, have been pre-vetted uh, by Pinterest as a trustworthy merchant. So there's that trust factor that's gonna be built into that blue check mark already on your account. Um, also, this makes your pins a lot more eligible uh, for distribution across all the new services on the platform where you know i mentioned before there's that shopping um, spotlight but there's also other different new new services that they've created as new features for the platform that gives your pins an eligibility to get surfaced on as well um, price and availability information is on all of your product pins um, again that blue check mark saying that you have been pre-vetted and then um, again you get a shop tab on your profile um, and that's really an aspect of you uploading your product catalog to Pinterest. Once you do that, it automatically uploads all your product pins to your shop tab, which is the first tab on your profile as a business account, as a product seller. So I wanted to talk again a little bit about 
<clears throat> product pins versus product tagging. These two things can be a little confusing. Again, your product pins are created automatically when you upload your product catalog. Um, they live on your profile in your shop tab, as I just discussed. And again, they can be distributed and, and appear in, um, in all the surfaces. And also in, you know, so you can also organize all of your, um, all of your products by category and most popular too. So once you have this kind of uploaded onto your shop tab on your profile, you can organize these um, as well. Product tagging. Now this is, you have to manually do this. This is not something that automatically happens. And in fact, you can't actually do this to any pins that you have through a third party scheduler. That's another caveat too. This is only something, uh, functionality that is available when you are publishing pins directly onto Pinterest. But it is a nice way to be able to tag, like say you have a lifestyle shot of a model wearing, you know, maybe five different products from your product line. You can upload that lifestyle shot as a standard pin and then tag each of those individual products. And that's gonna show up underneath um, your, your standard pin image. It's gonna show all the tagged products in that pin with links directly to those product pages on your site. So it's kind of a really nice feature to be able to, um, you know, it's sort of like Instagram product tagging. You can tag your post inside Instagram and then those are linked, you know, although I don't think you can link directly. Yeah, you can't actually go directly to that on your site. You, it's all within the Instagram ecosystem. These actually will link out to your site, to the product pages on your site. So this is actually driving traffic back to your site. It allows users to see product details, the title and the price. Um, and another thing that is newly rolled out too, is you can actually tag. So with idea pens, we're gonna discuss that very soon here. Um, but idea pens, the big thing is that there's no links. You can't link out on an idea pen as the first product Pinterest has ever created for their platform that does not allow you to link out, but you can tag products inside your idea pin. So um, it's been a little glitchy um, up till now. Hopefully they kind of iron out some of the wrinkles in this next year um, because that is a nice feature for people who actually are product sellers. All right, so what makes your content searchable? How to increase your brand's visibility? Because Pinterest, remember, Pinterest wants to connect users to their interests. So how you do that. So I want to show you a little um, graph here that I pulled from the Pinterest engineering blog. Don't worry if you um, if tech makes you, ugh, you know, I, that's okay. I'm here. I'm here to do that for you. So you don't need to worry about this. But I did, this is a great illustration. To, I kind of like a peek behind the curtain, you know, um, to see how Pinterest actually stores your keywords. Um, and this is a great example to kind of follow as you're kind of structuring your own keyword strategy for your account. So basically there's three tables that they're organizing, um, that the three main umbrellas of where they're organizing all of their content on the platform. So they have their users table, which is basically your profile and everyone else who has a profile on Pinterest, your boards table. So your boards are where you save and collect all the ideas uh, or all your pins on Pinterest. And then your pins table. These are basically bookmarks that people use to save content that they love on Pinterest. So I want you to look at your keyword strategy through the same lens as the Pinterest data store, right? So if the Pinterest data store is using the structure to organize the content on their platform, it's probably best to organize your content in the same structure as the Pinterest data store. So think of you know, your user table as your profile, right? Um, and you're gonna wanna use your keywords in your profile name and your description. So basically Pinterest has an understanding of what the overall um, vibe is about your accounts, like what, what your account is about basically a general sense of what it's about. And then you have your boards table here, and this is all your boards that you are creating, right? And using your keywords in your board titles and your descriptions to give more context 
to the relationship between your profile and your content topics, right? So think of your keywords as sort of the mortar and these tables are the bricks, right? And the keywords are the mortar that sort of gives, um, ties all of your tables together and gives context and even greater context to each element that is on your profile, each basically table on your profile. So, and then you have your pins table using your keywords in your pin titles and descriptions so Pinterest can better understand your pins taxonomy and distribute it in a search query. And I'm gonna show you in the next slides kind of how that looks in the wild. So you have your, um, your profile here. There are uh, basically three places you can optimize um, your business name. Um, and then inside your username, they allow you um, extra characters to give you um, some placement to uh, put keywords to give the punchiest description of your business, basically. So, you know, for me, I'm a one of a kind jewelry designer, um, you know, handmade. That's what I wanted to include here right after my business name and then my bio. 160 characters, really use this area to concisely describe your business using your relevant keywords. Um, don't use this to get cutesy um, or, you know, it's, it's different how you would write an Instagram bio versus a Pinterest bio. Instagram has a lot more personality. You know, you, you, you get clever, you get cute with Instagram bios. You don't want to get clever or cute. You want to be very clear about what it is that your business does and who you serve. And then SEO optimizations for your boards. Um, there's two places here, your board titles. Keep it punchy. Um, you don't need to get too wordy in your board titles. 73% of search queries are about one to three words in length. So just keep that in mind when you're coming up with your board titles. Um, and don't use, again, cutesy names like yummy or my style uh, or recipes I love, anything like that, anything that's not searchable, right? If you wouldn't go to Pinterest to use these terms to search for that specific content, don't use it. And then your board descriptions. Use relevant keywords without keyword stuffing to accurately describe your board's content. And then you can also SEO your pins. Um, you can SEO your pins in your pin title. And also one thing that I didn't actually include here is also you can SEO your pins by text overlay. Um, the Pinterest algorithm actually can read the text overlay on your pins. Um, and so that's another way that you can also optimize um, your SEO uh, with your pins as well. Um, and write an enticing description. This is actually probably the most important um, part of, you know, all the, all the, all the, um, the tables on your account. Um, this is actually probably the most important place to really use your keywords. Um, not just use your keywords, but also this is a great, uh, way to entice pinners to click through to your site. I mean, kind of think of this as like the billboard, uh, to your pins. You really want to, not only um, make sure that you are indexing it with your keywords, but also you 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 want to like you might get people to click over to your site. So you you really want to make something um, write something very enticing to um, pinners who are uh, maybe interested in checking out um, your products on your site and clicking to your site. Um, also, oh, I guess here's where we put the text overlay. So I did actually put this in here. Um, so again, like I said. Text overlay is a great way to SEO your pins um, and give your pins more context. You know, people, most people who are coming to Pinterest are using it via the mobile app. So, you know, they are scrolling through that two bar mobile feed pretty rapidly. And so if you can give a little bit of text overlay on your pins to give your image a little bit more context in that mobile feed, so people, um, click through it to get a closer look. Um, you want to be able to use that real estate um, um, strategically in that way. Also, make sure that you're using relevant image choices. Um, there is a lens uh, search feature on mobile where you can take a picture of something um, and then submit that image um, in a search function as well. So making sure that you are using um, you know, really relevant 
images, obviously you probably, I mean, you wouldn't be using anyone else's images of a pair of earrings that's on your, on your product. So um, that's kind of a no brainer, but um, just to let you know that lens is also a search engine. So people can also search via image as well. So again, I want to touch upon interest targeting again. Um, and again, this sort of, I, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier about how you don't need to have a ton of followers on your account for your content to get traction on the platform because you know you're pinning about your jewelry right you have a pin here about jewelry and users interested in your jewelry some of them are, um, are going to be following you right some of them are not going to be following you um people so you, you know if you're again using your keywords to index your content people who are not following you um, still have a great chance of bumping into your jewelry as well. Now, I do want to mention that <clears throat> that followers also matter as well. Just because anyone who follows your account, any pins that you publish are automatically going to be added to their home feed, right? Because they've already showed an interest in you as a creator. They want to see what you're publishing. So they've shown an interest in you as a creator. Um, and obviously, you as a creator, they're probably interested in your topics that you're publishing as well. So they will see your pins in their home feed. And if they repin any of your pins from their home feed, anyone who follows them will see your pins in their home feed. So, you know, although you can get a lot of traction without having a lot of followers, if you do start to grow your account and start to get followers, that's also going to benefit you in the long run as well. So leverage Pinterest SEO. Get your products discovered by those interested. Winning at pinning. Uh, how to increase the visibility of your pins and connecting users interested to your content. So this has changed a little bit. Um, this is still the two to three aspect ratio that I've always taught on. Um, in the past, this used to be 600 by 900. Um, now, what Pinterest is saying is the optimized pixel depth is um, 1,000 by 1,500. Again, it's still the two to three. Um, and this is a quote directly from Pinterest. Um, saying using high high quality vertical images that will stand out in people's feeds, two to three aspect ratio. Um, and, you know, don't, do you guys remember when we used to, uh, the really long pins used to be in style? Those are no longer recommended because those are going to get truncated in that mobile feed just because they, Pinterest doesn't want any one pin taking up a huge uh, amount of real estate inside that mobile feed. So it's going to truncate any pin that goes beyond that 1500 pixel depth in, in length um, from top to bottom. So, and it will um, or may negatively impact your performance. So you know what, just stick to that two to three, 1500 by a thousand um, for your um, Pinterest um, template uh, size ratio. And so here's some guidelines, you know, and honestly, this is just um, a reiteration of creating great content across any social platform, right? It's not just, these aren't just specific to Pinterest. This is specific to any platform that you're creating content for, right? You don't wanna use crappy images. You know, you wanna use an eye-catching images. Um, you know, try not to use too much stock photography. I don't think, you know, as, as product sellers, that's really less of a concern because we're gonna be creating a lot of pins um, featuring our own products. So that's not really um, as much of a concern. But, um, you know, experiment with different formats. Like, you know, Instagram made it clear a long time ago that they're no longer an image-based uh, platform, that they want people to be using all these other features and, and formats that they've been um, making available on their platform. It's the same thing with Pinterest. Um, you know, you can't, a, a good strategy isn't something that you're just using one particular format um, and expecting to get results, right? Play with different formats, play around with video. Play around with idea pins. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of strategy of how you can get that going in your account um, coming up in a few slides. Um, give context to your pins. Um, brand your pins. Um, use text overlay, like I said. Tell a good story. Um, hook people in. You can use ranking colors. Believe it or not, um, there is actually SEO um, hex colors that you um, that are high ranking for jewelry pins specifically. 
Um, that's something that you can employ as well as you're designing your pins. Um, show the benefits of your of 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 your jewelry, right? Um, and and give a clear call to action, right? Tell pinners what action they need to take next. You know, don't expect people to just know what they need to do next. You need to tell them what steps they need to do next. All right, fresh pins. This is a big one. Pinterest came out in 20 in beginning of 2020. And you know, one of the things that I love about Pinterest is they are interested in having their creators have a lot of success on their platform. And so they're pretty transparent whenever they're gonna do an algorithm shift. Um, and they made it very clear to creators in the beginning of 2020 that they are going to change their algorithm to prioritize and give distribution to fresh pins because they saw that users coming to their platform were not engaging with old pins that had been circulating on the platform for a bunch of years, um, that people were engaging more with fresh pins. And so knowing this information, they made an adjustment and then they told their creators, hey, we're making this adjustment. You might wanna make this adjustment as well as you are creating more content for the platform. Um, and so basically what that means is a new image for a new URL is the freshest type of pen that you can get. That's gonna get the most distribution right now. And then the second freshest is um, maybe a new image um, for an existing URL. Also with new context on your pin, a new title and a new description. That's still pretty fresh. That's still gonna get quite a, quite a bit of good distribution. And then you have, you're starting to get in the less fresher area, new image for an existing URL, um, not changing the title, not changing the description. And then of course the least fresh is resharing pins that have already been on Pinterest. So I know for product sellers, um, since you know you're not a you know, you're you're not your full-time job is not a blogger, right? So you're not creating a bunch of new blogs that would have a new URL that you can create a new pin for. So for us, it's a little bit more challenging, but some places that can maybe inspire um, to get some new content with some fresh URLs is um, of course your product pages, right? When you're creating pins for new products. Um, blog posts, I do hope that you guys as product sellers are blogging a little bit, just because um, businesses that blog um, have 123% more lead growth. So. That's just a good thing for any business. I don't care if you're a product seller, I don't care if you're a service provider, that's just a good thing to do. Um, landing pages, you can create a custom landing page, perhaps maybe you have an opt-in. Um, you can create a new URL by creating a new landing page. Um, collection pages um, and product category pages are just a few places on your website that you might have existing content that you can pull for a fresh URL and a fresh pin. All right, so now I wanted to show you kind of a visual example of um, how you can reframe your messaging um, using the same product URL to the same product, right? Um, and this is how you can reframe your messaging to reach broader audiences who might have a different search intent, who have a different thing in mind that they might be looking for on the platform. Um, and so, you know, here's, this is all the same gemstone cuff bracelets. Um, and you can see how I reframed my messaging um, to be a little bit different um, and to reach uh, different people with different search intents. And so kind of I used a formula that you guys can take a screenshot of right now of how you can sort of apply this sort of psychology to reframing messaging um, when you're creating pin content for your own brand. So basically, you know, you have what you have your offer and your offer is obviously your jewelry um and then you have the interest right pinterest interest connecting users to their interest look at the interest the desired outcome seasonal or life events and then the results you know how your products can offer solution this is really going to drive the copy on your pin so you have that gemstone bracelet from the previous slide um and the first example was discovering something exciting or new. That was their interest, right? So the copy that I used was your next favorite statement piece. Um, and then the number two example, again, that same gemstone bracelet from the previous slide, 
And then their interest is maybe someone's trying to look for a new piece of jewelry to wear at a friend's birthday party and they want to impress their friends. So this drove kind of the copy of like, hey, you want people to know where you got it. Um, and then the third example is that same gemstone bracelet. Um, and then their interest might be they're looking to plan for a ladies' night out. Um, you know, as we're getting out of uh, social distancing, you know, I, we're kind of, we're, I, who knows when we're going to be playing ladies' nights out again. But perhaps you were uh, wanting to plan to play uh, a ladies' night out. Um, and the result here and the copy that I ended up going with is the uh, perfect joy for the night out. So these are just examples of a way that you can reframe your messaging and your text overlay on a pin of a product, the same product, all going to the same URL. But you're creating sort of um, a fresh, reframed pin image um, and messaging as well. And relevancy, um, this is a great tool, Pinterest Trends, to sort of um, make sure that you are either publishing your pins um, to capture when people are gonna be searching for that particular type of content. So there is a, uh, Pinterest Trends is a tool that you can find underneath um inside your business account um under the ads tab i believe you can go all the way um down to the bottom and and you can get access to this pinterest trends and you can what i like to do is i like to use this to identify trends 45 days in advance um so i can plan my content actually 45 days in advance so you know i'll take a look at maybe um you know like I'll look at um, layering necklaces or sterling silver rings and I'll, I'll see when people are really spiking in searches. And a lot of, you know, honestly, for product sellers like us, specifically for jewelry designers, you're going to see um, a lot of these searches. You're going to if you're using the trends tool, a lot of these searches are spiking, of course, during the holidays. Right. In November, December, you're going to see a lot of searches spike in this area. But if you if you search for something like Mother's Day gifts. I bet you can understand when that would be a search spike on Pinterest. Very correlates to what happens in the real world. But what you can do, though, and how you can use this to strategize when you're publishing your content is that, you know, if you're publishing your content 45 days in advance of a search spike, you're giving your content um, time to get traction on the platform. So by the time when people are actually spiking in search, your pins are gonna have a better opportunity to get served up in a search query because it's had it's been seasoned on the platform for a bit now. Because Pinterest is a slow game. This is not a platform that is very effective for people who are wanting to use it to alert um, their followers of a flash sale, right? Use Instagram for stuff, for stuff that is um, time sensitive like that. With Pinterest, it takes a little bit more time for your content to get traction um, and to get seasoned on the platform. So using the trends tool is a great way to get in front of that, right? Use it to get strategic so you can have your pins be ready to get served up in that search query when people are really searching for that. So some pinning best practices, publishing pins consistently um, to give people a steady stream of great ideas. Um, again, you know, visually compelling pins, um, tell a good story. Um, make people want to learn more from you, right? I mean, the whole point of marketing on Pinterest and trying to capture all of the amazing traffic that exists on their platform is you want to get people to learn more, either learn more about how to get that product from you, how to buy that product from you, learn more about how to clean silver jewelry. Maybe maybe you have a great blog post um, that you know gives a solution to maybe something that people are searching for. Um, use high quality vertical images. We've already discussed all of this, but I want to reiterate it because it's really important. Quality over quantity. Um, you know, this is a, oopsies, not story pins, idea pins <laughs> to grow your account. Um, again, we're going to discuss that in some upcoming slides. Experiment with video pins. Video pins are big. You know, I mean, video is just huge on every platform right now. So I want you to experiment with that. Um, Pinterest loves relevant content also. Um, and this just serves your audience better to serve relevant content. And this also gives you a lot of inspiration for 
maybe if you did want to write a piece of blog content to have it be relevant and then publish those pins accordingly using the uh, Pinterest trends tool. Focus on creating fresh content. You want your pins to get the best distribution and the way to do that right now is to create fresh content and then duplicate your pins sparingly. And then mindset, there is nothing permanent except change. This is something that I've had to get comfortable with um, being a Pinterest marketer who's been using it for years now um, and then seeing all the changes that have been occurring in the last two years, I've had to adjust my strategy a lot. Um, and there is, you know, the one thing that is constant, and I think you guys probably feel this pinch across all social media platforms. I mean, even if you are using Instagram as your main uh, marketing platform, you're probably, you know, feeling that like, oh my gosh, slow it down on introducing new features, please. Same thing with Pinterest. You know, this is just something I think as a online marketer, you're just really going to have to settle into and expect, right? This is going to be just part of everyone's journey who is using the internet to market their business is that it's constantly going to be evolving. It's constantly going to be changing. It's a dynamic place um, that is um, adjusting. And a lot of this has to do with user behavior, right? How people are actually using the internet, how people are engaging with certain platforms, right? So let's get into um, adopting, adapting, sorry, adapting to a new creator focus on Pinterest. Again, Pinterest 2.0, right? We are in a different version of Pinterest than we have ever seen before. We have the introduction of idea pins. Um, we have Pinterest TV that just came out. We have the creators hub. We have the creators community, the Pinterest business community, um, and that search home screen, that today tab that I was tell telling you about. Again, that's a mobile only function, but it is definitely changing how users are interacting with the platform. And so we're gonna really make sure, we're gonna wanna make sure that we're kind of adjusting to Pinterest's adjustments to how in users are engaging with the platform, how they're using it to search. So idea pins, idea pins, idea pins. This is huge. They are just, this is just, Pinterest is loving this. This is not going away. Oh, there was a lot of speculation when these first came out if this was going to be a feature that was going to stick around. I am here to tell you, idea pins are not going away. You can either embrace them or not. Um, but if you're not embracing them, just like Instagram Reels, if you're not in, in, you know, embracing Instagram Reels, you're just going to create a stagnant um, growth on your account. So some <clears throat> ways, um, some, some high engagement idea pins are idea pins that are actionable, um, idea pins that are personality driven, um, novel and informative, visually appealing and positive and real. Here's some examples of uh, those types of high engaged idea pins here. And then here's some good practices. You know, um, you want to start, Pinterest says, start with a video. Um, not only will this capture the attention as people are scrolling through that mobile feed, because, you know, like I said, you know, it's, if you have a static image as, you know, it's, if you have an image that is movement, that has movement on it, it's going to just catch the eye in the mobile feed. Um, and so they recommend that you start with a video slide as your first slide for your idea pin, and then go for more pages. Now I have seen some very successful, especially in the product space area um, of one page um, idea pins. This is something that you're just gonna have to think critically about um, as far as your content um, and what works best for your workflow. Um, but typically, and what Pinterest says is the best practice is more pages. And they say five to seven, is sort of the sweet spot. Um, and I mentioned before that there are no links out of um, idea pins. Um, and so what does that mean? Pinterest really wants you to fully explain your idea all contained within that one idea pin. So fully explaining your idea from top to bottom so people don't actually have to leave the platform to go to your site to get the full, the full, concept of your idea pin, right? It's all contained inside that idea pin. And I, I guess this kind of dovetails into that, explain your idea really, right? 
making sure that you're totally explaining your idea from top to bottom inside that idea pin, and then make it human. Um, you don't necessarily need to show your uh, face on camera if you're still not really comfortable with that. Um, you can narrate it um, um, to show some personality. But you know, Pinterest really just wants you as the creator to really show your personality um, in your idea pins, um, and then create it yourself. Uh, don't go reposting, you know, something content that's already, you know, circulating the internet. Make it yourself. Uh, make it specifically for your brand. And honestly, you should be, you know, strategically making idea pins that support your brand and, and your brand objectives. And then a good quality check. Make sure that you're checking your borders, um, making sure that um, everything's high resolution, that your focus is in place and it isn't blurry. Um, and one thing to mention as well is that if you are active on Instagram, publishing reels um, consistently, or you're on TikTok, um, publishing content consistently, um, I know that Pinterest would have you think that that's not like a good practice, but I know how exhausting it is to be on the content hamster wheel all the time. And so if you can repurpose content that you've already created for other other platforms, um, if it makes sense. And I do think um, the type of content that you create for Instagram Reels is sort of very similar in line with idea pins. Go ahead and repurpose that here. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you permission to do that here and cheat a little, um, just because I do think that it uh, does help streamline. And honestly, I don't want you guys to feel too overwhelmed um, because Pinterest marketing, learning a new, new platform like this, because it does behave a little bit differently than Instagram, can be a little frightening. Um, it, it can be intimidating. So I want you to know that, you know, once you understand the fundamentals of Pinterest marketing, understand, truly understand that it's a search engine, how to index your pins by using your keywords and the content on your site, um, that it actually is not as scary as it seems. Um, it's actually can be a, uh, a passive marketing channel that works while you sleep um, and drive traffic to your site long, long after you publish your pins. So there's just some of the big benefits there. Um, I don't want you to get too overwhelmed with, um, oh my gosh, I have to create an entirely new form, format of content um, for idea pins. Um, you can repurpose. So, um, so you, here's the search home screen. Again, this is a mobile only feature. Uh, this is new as well. It's in the Today tab. You have, um, you know, today's inspiration, the shopping spotlight that I already discussed with you guys. Oh, actually, I think that was in a slide that we blocked out. So, the shop. Oh no, I think I did cover this actually. Um, okay, so live Pinterest TV. This is brand new. This is like in the last couple of months they just rolled this out. I'm actually going to drop in the chat the application form if you guys are interested in applying um, to get your own spot on Pinterest TV. Um, interesting to see if this feature is going to stick around, how users coming to the platform are going to be engaging with this particular new feature. Like I said, I think this next year is going to be the litmus test to see um, which of all the new crazy rollout of new features on the platform, which ones that Pinterest is going to really um, double down on and which ones they're going to get rid of entirely. Um, but there's, they're testing a lot of different things. Um, and you can test it also for your brand, see which ones are a good fit for you. Um, and then shopping ideas for you. Um, I should mention, I do actually remember now some of the slides that did get blacked out there. Um, one of the things that Pinterest, uh, rolled out too was the, um, the creator's community. Um, you can apply to be part of it inside the Pinterest business community. I believe to be eligible, you need to be creating one idea pin a week, but this gets you access to a lot of cool stuff. So you can submit your idea pins to actually get featured in the today's tab, which is pretty cool. That's a feature only available for people, for creators that are part of that creator community. Um, and also they um, regularly host webinars. They bring in a bunch of guest speakers, um, all in service to their creators to get you guys to create your best content. So you get a lot of support um, in how to use Pinterest marketing in the best way possible as a creator by being part of this community. Um, and there's also other creators in there that you can connect with. Um, there's a lot of product support 
um, that is a lot more acute and a lot more efficient than just going and opening a um, a ticket through their support. Um, there's just a lot of great things um, available to you. Again, Pinterest is so transparent with their creators. They really do want you to have success on their platform. It's sort of a, I'll scratch your back if you scratch my back sort of ecosystem, which I love. Um, that really sets you up to um, maximize your success on their platform. Um, and so, and again, also these new services are additional services for your content to also be um, brought up in a search query too. So these are just, um, instead of just in a straight search in the search bar, your content can also show up on, on all these services as well. Um, so the Creators Hub, this is new too. If you have a business account and you are um, have flagged to Pinterest basically that, hey, I'm a creator, you get a little Creators Hub on your, uh, and this again, this is a mobile only, so you can't find this if you're on desktop, but if you open up your app, your Pinterest app, you have this Creators Hub and it will give you all your stats on your idea pins. So you're gonna know which idea pins are really driving new followers to your account, uh, profile visits, your saves, pin clicks and impressions. It's gonna show you um, who the top creators are in your sphere. So maybe if you are struggling to get inspiration to get ideas for your own or idea ideas for your own idea pins, you can go into inside this Creators Hub and take a look at what other people are doing and maybe get some inspiration um, for your own content. And then creation ideas as well um, to kind of help guide um, topics that you might wanna cover in uh, with your own content. Pinterest ID uh, TV, again, I'm gonna put that link in the chat um, at the um, once I'm finished with this presentation. We're almost there, I promise. Um, so if you guys are interested in um, applying for this, you will have that opportunity as well. Oh, here we go. We didn't we didn't actually miss these slides. Here they are here. So again, I've talked about the Pinterest creator community, the benefits of joining the Pinterest creator community. Again, you can find that inside the Pinterest business community. And then there's the US creator community hub that you can join or at least apply for. So I'm gonna just cover, this is gonna be the last part of this presentation. Basically, uh, bullet points of what you want to be focusing on um, in this next year. As far as adjusting to all of these changes, you're going to be wanting to focus less on curation. Uh, back in the day, it used to be good practice to repin um, other high ranking pins um, to your account on a regular, consistent basis. Um, that's no longer the case. Again, it has a lot to do with the focus on fresh content and also the focus on that Pinterest really wants you pinning your content, right? It wants you to be creating your own content um, for your own brand, which is dovetailing into the second bullet point here by making fresh pins for your own brand instead. So making fresh pins for product um, and writing, you know, write those blog posts. I know blog posts, is a, it's, it's, it's not, it's never really been prioritized as a product seller. I'm telling you, it really be benefits you. I'm um, not just to create those new product URLs, but this is um, a way that you can really nurture people um, that are already in um, your sales funnel, right? People who are already on your list. Um, and also to, you can use this to attract new customers as well on Pinterest. This is a great, I use this method to attract a lot of new leads on Pinterest is I'll write um, searchable blog content, publish those pins on, on Pinterest, get people to uh, sign up for my list once they come to my site from Pinterest, from a blog post that I've written content for and publish new pins for. And then you might wanna consider auditing your boards. Again, it used to be great practice to um, come up uh, with you know two to three new board topics every month and create new boards around those topics. Um, even if they weren't related to your brand, they were uh, back in the day related to your dream client's interests. Um, no longer the case really. Pinterest wants you creating boards that are brand focused. Um, and so consider uh, maybe auditing your boards if you have a bunch of boards on your account that aren't related to your brand at all. And then video, again, video is just huge everywhere. Um, you can't escape it. It is um, something that um, if you haven't embraced already, maybe this year is your year 
to really get over that hump of embracing being on camera, uh, using camera, um, even if, again, you're not comfortable being on camera, getting your feet wet by narrating um, or just showing a tutorial just with your hands, you know, um, and not showing your face. But um, people want to see your beautiful face. So I just say, you know, get on camera, you know, and practice in front of a mirror. Uh, but, get, but get on camera. People love to be connected to a person. Um, and if you can show your face on camera, um, there's no better way to be like, hey, this is not a faceless brand. This is, hey, this is me. I'm the creator. Um, and people can actually connect to you on that human level. Uh, quality over quantity. This is a no-brainer. This goes to all the content you're creating across all of your social channels is uh, quality over quantity. Um, again, that uh, consistency thing, I want to caveat that Pinterest will adjust to your consistency, right? Whether it's one pin a day or 20 pins a day. If you can only commit to one pin a day, heck, even one pin a week, although I don't recommend that you're just pinning once a week, but if that's the consistency that you can give to it, just stay consistent with that. But you know, you don't need to be consistent with crazy number of pins every day. Um, even if it's just one, Pinterest will adjust to that. So, you know, quality over quantity. Don't worry about, you know, the number of pins. Focus on quality. Focus on that consistency. Um, and create savable content. So any actionable or informative content really checks this box, such as, you know, a tutorial on how to layer necklaces or how to remove tarnish from your silver jewelry. These are things that people were definitely going to want to save to refer back to later. Pinning to the most relevant board. So again, remember the keywords and how you are using your keywords to create that relationship between all of the different tables on your profile your um you know between your boards and your pins this is this is why pinning to the most relevant boards is really important to really strengthen that relationship taxonomy so that pinterest can better distribute your pins in a search query and then consistency is key again uh, we talked about that this is an evergreen tactic um that will just help your pins be discoverable for a long time and then create content with positivity inspiration in mind pinterest has made it really clear they want to keep their platform free of misinformation or toxic political topics um in fact they you can't even run an ad as a, like a weight loss supplement because they want people to have a positive body image on pinterest they really want to foster just a positive community which is awesome I love that because it's a really unique place in the internet that is really free from a lot of the toxic aspects that other social platforms have. I mean, in fact, they just created, um, they released the creator's code, which really reinforces that, um, that they want their creators to be creating content that is inspirational and positive because people are coming to Pinterest to plan the life that they love, right? So moving forward, let me help you. Um, I know this is a lot of information. Um, I do have a free resource uh, for you to help you get started. Um, the ultimate Pinterest starter guide. Um, I'm going to drop this in the link in the chat. Um, but this basically is going to walk you through all the things that I touched upon in this slide um, step by step. This is a great way to just build out your, your accounts, get started with your Pinterest marketing today. Um, you can go ahead and download download that for free today. Um, this is actually the not the right link here. I'm going to drop the right link in chat. But if you are in the second category where you've kind of got a start on your Pinterest marketing, but you're just sort of lacking in strategy and you're kind of you know you're you're kind of just kind of standing still and you're in in, in like moving forward, um, I can definitely help you build out some custom strategy for you. Um, and I'll give you a link for you to be able to, to do that um, in the chat as well. Um, if you have questions about this presentation or if you have questions just about like, hey, I just have, I, I don't quite still know if Pinterest marketing is right for my brand, please feel free to reach out to me. I am more than willing and happy to help answer any questions you may have. You can DM me on Instagram at redpingeek. I will get back to every single one of you who reaches out to me um, with a question. So with that,
Ashley, let's get into some um, questions. There were a lot of questions. Oh my gosh, so much information. <laughs> I know. I, I hope you guys aren't intimidated by drinking from the fire hose. But <laughs> um, so just real quick, I did put in the sticky message that uh, the link to all of her, the guides available on red, redpingeek.com. So you guys can go check those out, um, including that ultimate one she was talking about. It's all up there. Um, I'm not going to be able to get to all of the questions because there were just so, so many. Um, so I'm going to go through a few and then you can reach out to Andrea through some of those uh, ways that she mentioned and get any other information you need. Um, so a lot of people, you were mentioning a third party app with um shopify let me actually yeah let me actually drop that link so this is the link um for a strategy call for anyone who's uh, already engaged with a pinterest marketing journey but just needs a little strategy there's the link for that let me put in the link for the shopify app um because you can go ahead and download that right now <clears throat> and get that started on your shopify app right now so let me go ahead and um get that going for you right here let me just grab it here we go okay let's see here come on okay here we go we've got this in the link here so this is the link for um the shopify app third-party plugin um and let's see what was the other one the starter guide oh here's the link for anyone who wants to apply for their own Pinterest TV spot, and here's that link there. Awesome, cool, sweet. So let's get into these questions. All right, so there were some questions and comments kind of about deleting pins and um, like hidden boards. And so can you kind of talk about, should you delete pins, just kind of hide them? And if you hide yeah, them, you know what? how that so affects your optimization? Yeah, it, it actually doesn't. Um, you know, um, I wouldn't bother deleting pins. It's just a waste of your time. You can spend your precious time doing other um, things that actually have a bigger impact. So don't delete your pins. Um, although, I, if, you know, I think what's happening and I think what's going to be something that's, that Pinterest is going to be rolling out this year is that you're going to see a lot of differences um, in your profile. Um, in fact, I was on a call with uh, the internal teams. Um, I think that they are going to be actually hiding all of your saved pins, not the pins that you pinned, but any pins that you repinned from other accounts. They're going to hide those entirely from your profile. So if you have boards on your profile that um, are board topics that aren't related to your brand, that have pins that you did not that you did not actually publish yourself, that you just repin from other accounts, I don't. Even, I think those are even just going away on their own anyway. So you can just if for if you want to keep those around for your own reference, just toggle them to secret, and they won't show on your account once you toggle them to secret. But I also think that something that's coming down the pike this year is that those are just going away entirely anyway, um, because Pinterest is just going to, the Pinterest gods are going to make, are going to make it so. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So yeah, definitely focusing on original content then. That's kind of nice. Um, let's see here. So that actually kind of answers one of the other questions. Um, let's see here. So kind of talking about reusing some of those pins, um, is it, can you use the same descriptive text for each one? Is that going to hurt you? Um, or kind of how do you make things different? Can you post the same image? Just kind of talk about reusing some of that content. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. This is, this is one that um, definitely can cause some confusion for sure. So like I said, the freshest pin that's going to get the best distribution on the platform right now is a brand new image to a brand new URL. So say you just, you created a new product. You created a new product page for that new product. You wanna create a pin of that product for Pinterest. You have, you create your beautiful pin inside Canva of your product um, with text overlay uh, and you publish that to Pinterest and it's, it's a brand new URL, right? You just created that new product. That's the freshest pin that you can create. Now, the second freshest pin is say, um, you make a second pin 
for that same product, going to the same product page URL, but maybe you change the pin title to like, say the, say the product is a sterling silver pendant. You could say as the pin title, um, um, silver pendant, or maybe you have a gemstone on that pendant, like it's a blue topaz pendant necklace could be your pin title. And then a pin description. Um, maybe you also know that that pin, that pendant, that blue topaz pendant is also made of sterling silver. So maybe as you upload a second pin with the same image, maybe, um, but you change the context of the pin a little bit by changing the pin title. So instead of saying blue topaz pendant necklace, you say uh, sterling silver pendant necklace. Um, and then um, maybe change the context a little bit of your pin description, right? Just re, just sort of reorganizing some of your keywords maybe. Um, so that would be like the second freshest type of pin. Mm -hmm. And the third freshest type of pin would be um, not changing your pin image at all um, and maybe just changing the pin title and not the pin description. So you see how you, there's just different components that you can switch out to create new messaging and a, um, a different version of that pin. Um, like I said, the freshest version is your first one, but you can still get quite a bit of sort of fresh pin content, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, that points all to the same product URL. Okay, awesome. Um, so someone was asking, how can you use some of the idea pins if you're not able to link out? So I'm not sure. Yeah. So you... this has been, yeah, this has been a huge topic of, you know, this is really split like people who have loved Pinterest marketing, um, because you can't link out like that. The whole point and the, the, you know, the big reason why I have always loved Pinterest marketing is because of that linkability all your content's linkable, right? Instead of Instagram, which gives you no links, right? You have one link on your account and that's your link tree on your profile. Um, but you can't actually link any of your content out. But Pinterest allows you to do that, which is a wonderful um, benefit of Pinterest. But idea pins, ah! So now I like to use idea pins to really um, build, like to, to really establish yourself um, as an authority in your space on Pinterest. And I have found that creating idea pins because they are getting such favorite distribution right now across the platform. I mean, they're just being what they called, uh, what Pinterest calls control distribution, which means that they are interjecting a certain percentage of idea pins into your home feed, whether you've I, engaged with idea pins before or not. Because um, usually your, your home feed algorithm is set to feed you content that you've engaged with previously. So it's feeding you content that it thinks you're interested in. Um, mm -hmm. With idea pins, they're just, they're just putting those inside your, your home feed, whether or not you've been engaged with idea pins before or not. So you're just getting a lead distribution across the platform. Um, and I have found that it gets a lot of front door traffic. So like backdoor traffic would be uh, a pin that's linked directly to a product page, right? That's backdoor traffic. It's going directly to that product page from that pin. But a lot of people I've noticed have, I'm starting to get a lot of front door traffic. People who see my idea pin on Pinterest, maybe go to my account. Um, they see my website right there. They click on my website from my account. They so and they get to my website through the front door. So there is a lot of benefits to use idea pens because it basically is just getting in front of so many more eyeballs on the platform versus standard pens, um, which because of a lot of the changes that Pinterest has made in the last year specifically, the algorithm hasn't had a time to settle down yet. And a lot of people are starting to see impressions on their standard pins go down. Um, Whereas idea pins, your impressions are going through the roof just because they're getting so much more distribution. So they, yes, they don't link out, but the chances of someone seeing that content is much higher. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. ho hopefully that answers the question. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna have to go ahead and um, we'll do one more question and then uh, feel free to go over to social media 
in the Jeweler Spark and on Instagram to connect with Andrea for more questions. Um, that way we can uh, get everything answered because <laughs> there was definitely a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> so one of the other questions was, would you recommend using Pinterest as kind of like a way to highlight your star items or to push an entire catalog of items? Um, I would I would use it to promote all of your all of your products. Um, you can, like I said, inside your shop tab, organize your products um, from your product catalog by category and most popular. Um, those are the only two functional. Hopefully they give a little bit more functionality to that. Hopefully in this next year, I would like to see um, a greater flexibility of how you organize your products um, inside your shop tab. But I would honestly, I mean, all of the products on your, on your website are a chance to create a new pin with a new URL. So I would use Pinterest to, to promote all of your products. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys, everyone, for joining us. Um, like I said, go ahead and head over to Jeweler Spark Instagram. Andrea is happy to answer some questions over there. And thank you for joining us. And join us tomorrow. We'll be starting up all new. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone.